Okay, we're here with Talking Pallets. I am your host, Daniel Crozier. I will apologize early. <laughs> so sorry you, you guys are stuck with me. And I am, uh, here, <laughs> I am joined by my wonderful guests, Bobby Lee Black and the Enigma. How are you guys doing? It's great I'm to be on the show. Are you supposed to time? What's uh, I, you're breaking up, Enigma. Is it all? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bobby, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to have Enigma on the show with us. It's really, uh, it's really exciting what we got going on. Cool. And, and, and you guys really haven't met in person before, have you? Not yet, no. Well, well, soon, hopefully soon, after all this COVID, you know, <laughs> stuff is, is subsided, um, you know, hopefully you guys can actually do that. Absolutely. We're, we're planning on it. Good, good. Uh, yeah, and, and Enigma, you and I go way back. We've made comic books together and a lot of movies <laughs> together and yeah. probably set some fires together, too. So, yeah. yeah. So I certainly miss you, and uh, you know I'm glad that you're doing well with your your new shop and everything too in Nebraska. Thanks. Uh oh. So for some reason, somebody's. Ouch. My girlfriend's trying to call me, video conference me. Uh, of course. She doesn't, she doesn't quite understand, uh, you know, my schedule. But anyway, right. <laughs> Bobby. Uh, yeah, a big reason why, why we're here today is, you know, to talk about you and, and your project and, and how Enigma fits into it. Can you, uh, you know, talk to us a little bit uh, you know, about yourself and, and uh, where you come from? Well, um, I entered the entertainment industry through radio in Hawaii. I was a radio DJ for a while and... Uh, by circumstances, I ran into somebody that talked me into professional wrestling. I uh, put on some weight and I went and did that for three years. And uh, somebody told me that they needed a wrestler in a commercial. So I went and did that and went to some small films. And next thing you know, I was in The Punisher and things just kind of blew up from there, you know. And uh, I got into writing. I did some writing. And now I'm, now I'm actually producing. Cool, man, and, and all this time, you've, you've been doing tattooing. I've been tattooing since I was 16. All this other stuff I do is just other stuff I do. I'm a tattooer at heart. Nice, oh man, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. And uh, you know, uh, Enigma, I mean, a lot of people you know, think you should be in a wrestling ring too. Uh, you know, um, I, I'm here in Nebraska, so they can come at me, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see him coming. It's pretty flat out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Uh, so, so Bobby, tell us a little bit about uh, you know the film project that you're working on. Well, it's called The Shop, and it is a full-length feature comedy about a tattoo shop and the lifestyle that goes along with it. Um, the broad brush strokes are. Um, old old tattooer doesn't like the new tattooer the new the new guys from art school he's from the old school you know and so there's a lot of shenanigans and hijinks that take place between those two um the new tattooer decides he's going to fall in love with the uh piercer so there's some stuff going on there we've also <laughs> got a landlord that's continually trying to kick us out and in the process of it all i'm dying Oh, wow. So. Yeah, a lot, lot going on, man. A lot going on in this movie. And uh, the way Enigma fits in is uh, he is set up to be tattooed by this old school tattooer. And uh, the guy's late for his appointment. Ooh. And so Enigma is going to be Enigma in that circumstance. <laughs> and do whatever he does, because we've basically just written the role out as um, this happens, this happens, Enigma Improv. 
this nice. happens enigma improv enigma nice. improv in the background while we're doing this do you know what i mean so it's kind of up to him oh that's cool yeah <laughs> you know the old adage uh if you're there after the tattoo artist gets there you're late if you're there before the tattoo artist gets there you're early and it's just yes. like that's yeah that's cool <laughs> <laughs> absolutely man <laughs> that's funny nice <laughs> Well, that'll be that'll be pretty fun. Uh, you know, Bobby, how did uh, this project kind of come about? Obviously, you know, uh, probably uh, take upon it, you know, from from your life as a you know, tattooer, uh, you know, write what you know, right? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the majority of the, st the the character Bobby in the movie is really actually me. Um, these are, Idolo, the writer and I, we worked together as tattooers for about three years. And so he's heard every story I've got to tell a hundred times because he sat there and listened to me tell it to clients <laughs> over and over again. And he just works some of that stuff into the script, you know? <laughs> so, uh, there's a lot of funny stuff in there because I've been tattooing 36 years. A lot of weird stuff's happened, man. You know, and uh, there's a lot of stuff in there from his experiences as well. You know, oh, cool. um, the, way the project came about was we were shooting a uh, series that was based on the same premise mm -hmm. that uh, we couldn't get funded because we didn't have enough notoriety to pull that kind of money together. Right. So, but the but the pilot episode was really well received on social media and on YouTube. Everybody really liked it, and they seemed to really want to see another another episode. Um, yeah. Flash forward a couple of years, now we've got a full length feature feature movie based on those characters and those premises. And uh, I think, excuse me, I think we have a built in audience with um, the way things are going with the tattoo industry and tattoo culture and tattoo entertainment. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, I think that we'll do just fine. Yeah, uh, yeah, tattooing, especially my experience with uh, Enigma, is incredibly prevalent. It's everybody you know, has a tattoo, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, everybody's been to a tattoo shop. Everybody knows tattooers. You know, the magazines for tattooing fill up a portion of the rack at the grocery store. So it's. True. it's you know, when you see it on Instagram, um, all the, the, you know, the hottest models or influencers <laughs> or whatever you call them, they're all tattooed up, you know, the good ones anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, you know, the boring ones, eh, not so much. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, and, and tattooing, you know, goes back thousands of years, right? Well, they find older and older stuff all the time. I mean, the recent one they found was that Ice Man or Ice Woman or whatever that had tattoos, you know. So I think it goes back way back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah, of course, you know, there should be more, you know, you know tat prominent tattooing in, uh, you know, popular media. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it, uh, it, it you know, Enigma, you know, one of the fun things about you is you're basically a, a, a walking, talking, uh, you know, action figure, you know, you know, when we, when you and I did the comic books, you know, years ago, we, uh, yeah, the, the way I would introduce you is, is like, you know, a Hellboy, because that was when you had the horns, that requires no makeup. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, maybe a little, uh, you know, uh, you know, anti-glare, but, but yeah, you know, I, I, otherwise than that, yeah, I'm pretty much just, you know, just am myself. And that, that's pretty good, you know, for any movie, I guess, or show, you know, you want to see the characters as, as much as they really are, you know. So right. the, the more you throw on there, the, the less it, it just turns into like uh, anime, which I love. I have tons of that too, but. Um, but it's fun seeing, you know, especially on these big giant screen TVs these days, you can see uh, the hair follicles, you know, on, on right. shaven stars, you know. So it's really amazing and cool that way. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't know, I saw Alien um, on, on a giant TV and I was like, 
wow, you know, my little crummy TV doesn't really do it like that. But I mean, just, you know, seeing every, uh, every bit of the stars. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay. I know, you're okay, trailing, but, that's um, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and uh, and, the, and the, it just kind of gives you more of that sense of like, this is real and, and fun and, uh, and imaginative, you know, it just, it's, it gets your mind to, mm -hmm. to work on it. Like, hey, I could be in these situations, you know, this looks like a real person here. I, this could be me doing this or, you know, what would I do and how would I do it? And what, especially like Walking Dead or something like that, you know, it's yeah. all survivalistic instincts being kicked in by the show, you know? But yeah. I, I think in this show that we're doing this movie, it just sounds more like it's, it's a lot of comedy, which is great, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, it's uh, always good to laugh, you know? Oh yeah. It's, uh, I, I think it, you know, something <laughs> lighthearted. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, granted, Bobby, what you just laid out, it's like, oh yeah, and I'm dying, and you got all these, you know, other. <laughs> but I die funny. Yeah, I die, <laughs> I die funny. funny. <laughs> I usually well, in yeah, most sarcasm, movies, right? in most of the movies I'm in, I die tragically, but it, in this right. one, I die funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> way, way to change it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and you know, the, I think the the best way to live life is with a lot of humor, with a lot of laughter. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you if you can't do that, even in the most dire of situations, what's the point? What are you living for? Um, yeah, I think I think that's you know one. I think that's something that Enigma and I have talked about, and then that's something that I've been I've been watching way too much Mister Rogers Neighborhood recently. So <laughs> that's and that is one of those messages that gets reaffirmed there too. So I mean, there been there have been some great comedies coming out too, like. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw the Joker. That was funny. <laughs> I mean, um, lots of comedies out there, you know. Uh, the Titanic, that was funny. Titanic um, was funny, actually. I, I will agree with that one. <laughs> you know, I I never cried so much at the end of a movie before, but you know, three hours later, I had to go to the bathroom so bad that the <laughs> tears were just welling up. I I couldn't help it, you know. Um, but, yeah. Bobby, are you ready for this? He's gonna. This is how he he comes. He comes factory. It's gonna be a ball. Ready to go. <laughs> I'm I'm counting on it. I'm absolutely. <laughs> you're you're, you're gonna have a couple of days of know. just like riffing. <laughs> I'm just yeah. you know, saying stuff you already know. It's just coming out. Is the truth, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah, um. So it, it does sound like, too, that this project has a lot of heart. And I did, you know, see the episode uh, on YouTube. Uh, you know, Groovy uh, you know, emailed that to, to me mm -hmm. as well. So it, 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 yeah, it, it's, it's got a lot of charm to it. Um, you know, what, um, is it going to be predominantly the same cast as featured in there? No, no. Those, I did that um, pilot episode with no actors. Okay. Um, all those kids were just kids that I was working with. Nice. So, uh, um, no, we've got a lot of seasoned actors on board. We've got a uh, seasoned crew. Okay. Um, I've got 33, uh, 33 primary actors and 26 background actors right now. Wow. Um, you, it's a pretty full car. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you, you, you've done this whole thing before. I mean, you're... Um, yeah, I, I noticed on IMDb, and you mentioned it earlier too. Uh, your work on uh, you know the uh, the Thomas Jane Punisher movie. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and, and you uh, you were muscle on that. Is that right? Yeah, it was a Russian uh, a Russian uh, mobster, and I killed John Travolta's son, and then the feds killed me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Again, always dying. That's my get. <laughs> That's what I do. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, at least you, you, you got it to, to John Travolta's kid, you know, in, in terms of like, I mean, he, he went on to go do Wild Dogs or something like that. So, right. You know, like, know. Oh, come on, John. Oh, <laughs> you know, I, I, you can only do Pulp Fiction once. So, yeah, right. That was, he should have, he should have went home a winner with that one. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, so that's cool. And when, uh, Bobby, when are you looking at uh, starting to film? 
We uh, shoot on the 16th of August through the uh, 29th of August. Wow. Um, we actually have probably nine or 10 shoot days in that 12 day period. Okay. But we're going we're gonna to nail it down pretty quick. Um, we've got some multiple set locations that will help with that. Um, we've got an assistant, uh, assistant DP that's also a drone pilot that'll be helping with uh, picking up, uh, picking up uh, other shots while we're doing something else. So nice. we got a pretty good crew on, on board and we got a pretty tight, pretty tight shoot schedule. That's, that's fantastic. Um, you, you and I, you know, off camera, we were uh, talking a little bit about, uh, you know, how, you know, how things might change, you know, depending on, you know, uh, the COVID situation here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know, it sounds like you, you've got, uh, you know, you're, you're going to play it by ear in case something uh, changes. Yeah, if, if they put a if they put a kibosh on getting together, then obviously we're going to be out of luck. But um, I've got a really good crew that are willing to uh, show up and uh, do the necessary things to keep everyone safe. And uh, it's it, we're we're pretty much we're pretty much ready to face it. Yeah, cool. Uh, that's we'll bulk on the vitamin. C. What's that? We'll bulk up on the vitamin C. That's yeah, right. man. Bulk up on the vitamin <laughs> C and the echinacea. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I, I have, have big stations, little medical stations, uh, you know, where you can do kale. Kale's good. Garlic. Okay. Not kale. No, not kale. <laughs> oh, God, not kale. <laughs> Spinach. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking of the greens. We can throw on broccoli. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay yeah. with that. <laughs> I, think, I think kale's pretentious. It is, it, oh, it's got, it's got a bad attitude, the kale. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Kale? There's a middle finger for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's all. That's hilarious. Um, no, I could totally see that. I could see that. Jeez. Um, um, <laughs> After a big bowl of kale, I like to chew on some pennies for dessert. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. It, gets, it gets the taste of the kale out of your mouth. It's really right. good. <laughs> the good conductor uh especially if you got like a little Hill flavor I do they? yeah if you got the little uh metallic fillings or anything like that uh, oh yeah it makes it fun <laughs> I was like, yeah i think i remember that as a kid you know doing stuff like that in in the dark and, and seeing it like spark mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um but uh yeah, so, Oh, so Dan. What, what's, what's that? Oh, Dan, oh, Dan, oh, Dan. Oh, yeah. I tell you. Yeah, you keep popping <laughs> in and out there, buddy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I'm right here the whole time on my I, phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yes, yeah, so, so uh, with, with the film, too, like, if everything goes well, um, you're expecting to release it the next year? We're expecting to deliver it in January. Wow. And yeah, yeah, we're going to deliver it in January. Huh? And uh, we've got some action with some uh, uh, distribution companies. Oh, that, um, And I'm working on getting into the, uh, the drive-in circuit because that's coming back right. really big. Right, right. That's, that's wonderful. There's, um, so, yeah, in the, in the current situation, yeah, yeah drive-ins have been, you know, uh, picking up, you know, some of the releases that, uh, you know, just came out, you know, when, when this all hit, some of the old classics, and then, you know, some, some direct, uh, you know, video on demand uh, features. Yeah. And because of this, it, it's given uh, a lot of, you know, those films that would, you would normally see only on, on cable or only on video on demand or, or streaming or DVD given them the opportunity to be quite literally the box office world champions. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, I mean, that's been an interesting uh, story. I mean, a lot of them have been horror. Some of them have been some, you know, raunchy comedies and then, and then Pixar's onward. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, 
these these type of situations do you know breed a lot of uh, opportunity and innovation. Mm -hmm. It really has. It's kind of changed the industry very very quickly. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> now getting getting on streaming is not nearly as hard as it was. Right. Um, now getting into the, the drive-ins is a whole different thing than getting into the theaters. You know. Right. Um, there's just a lot of, lot of, lot of stuff that, that we can benefit from. Oh, yeah, that, that's exciting. Well, I, I can't wait to, you know, to see and, and, uh, you know, hear how things, uh, you know, uh, you know, go, um, you know, and, and then, you know, you've also got, uh, you know, Bobby, you've got your shop, uh, up in Thornton and Enigma, you've got your shop, uh, in, uh, in Nebraska, where in Nebraska is it? Sydney. Oh, okay. I love Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sydney, <laughs> Australia, Nebraska. That's yeah, where. that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's cool. Um, so, yeah, Bobby, how long have you had uh, your shop uh, up there? Well, this place that I'm working at, I don't own. I'm, oh, I'm, I hope to never have the misfortune of owning another tattoo shop. <laughs> I've, I've, had, I've had eight in total. Oh, wow. um, managing tattoo artists is like herding cats. Right. It's a really, it's a really tough thing to do. So I'm, I'm just working for some buddies of mine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. And then Enigma, you, you own or co-own yours, is that right? Um, n no, I, um, it's, uh, it's a shop and, um, Josh, uh, and I work at it and, um, we kind of make up stuff as we go. Okay. All right. <laughs> there's no, like, there's no, there's no set anything really. It's so experimental and, you know, it, it's new and. And we're just kind of looking at the numbers and and what we can do. And and uh, right now we're just kind of slaves to the shop. Right now, just right. Yeah. Well, that's that's good because normally you know your work, your 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 main line of work you know, is, is traveling, and, doing yeah. you know shows, you know performing sideshow. You, you know, yeah. You're not really able yeah. to do that at this time, right? Yeah. There's a couple of shows coming up, but um they keep moving them back you know uh, i know that uh oklahoma city is coming up uh and then uh, city as well uh mm -hmm. at the end of the month i believe and uh it's like i think i'm gonna be at like two shows a month um now as far as october and elitch gardens goes i haven't yeah. really received word yet um uh as far as you know how they're doing or what's up but um it, you know, I, I hopefully I'll be out there and, and doing shows and entertaining people. And I got new stuff, of course, every year is always new stuff, um, whether they like it or not. And it, <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yep. But it's, it's kind of it's kind of groovy. Uh, I, you know, I've been tattooing blue puzzle pieces since 93 mm -hmm. and uh, all that experience of tattooing. Um, I, finally, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm branching out into more things you know I, still a, a basic you know a lot of it's just the basic drill and fill like at the dentist um but uh you know josh is he's been tattooing all kinds of crazy stuff for over 10 years now so right. he has all those tips and techniques down you know and so i'm kind of learning a bunch uh from what he's doing and, and just trying to figure out my own spot too but uh, <laughs> yeah it's it's a blast man that's cool that that's that's great. I'm I'm glad that uh, you know you know during this time because yeah you know, that was a concern I was I was having with you is like oh crap how's Enigma gonna make his his living but it sounds like you <laughs> yeah. figured out you know yeah so I just that, it just slid right into place you know it was all yeah. yeah I I wanted to do this anyway it was already done and and it just COVID just happened to make it a little bit slower but otherwise than that it's it's, it's the magic it's supposed to be. <laughs> well that's that's fantastic um and yeah and uh you know bobby uh you, know, you and i got connected through uh through our mutual friend groovy and of course yeah enigma is a good friend of groovy's as well 
Yeah, he's uh, he's a groovy guy. He lives up to his name, man, for sure. <laughs> you know, most I, uh, I recently went into business with him to uh, as uh, him as my uh, publicist, as you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's been working really hard to uh, help us promote the movie and to help us uh, try to find more investors for the movie. Oh, that's that's wonderful. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. So it, it, as as far as like uh, you know locations too, are you guys going to be using the the current shop that you're at right now? No, no, I'm using a friend of mine's shop um, down in Aurora. His, his, uh, his place is where we shot the original uh, series uh, pilot. And he's been gracious enough to allow, him, allow us to use his place on the days that he's not working or after hours. Nice. So that's, that's really cool. And uh, then we've got another location out in Parker called Deep Space, which okay. is a... It's a, uh, a, a vent location, you know, for vents and whatnot. Yeah. And we've got six locations in that place that we'll be shooting in one day. Oh, cool. Wow, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. So y you're, you're basically going to have a, a virtual soundstage, you know, set up. Yeah, really. Uh, that, that's where we're going with it, for sure. That's, that's absolutely wonderful. Um, it, it's great to, you know, to, to see and hear that, you know, these type of projects um, are getting going, you know, are able to sustain. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned uh, to you, Bobby, uh, earlier that, uh, you know, Camp Crash has kind of been having to sh be shelved, uh, my, mm -hmm. my web series, uh, it, at least in, until a lot of this subsides, just because, well, a lot of our actors and crew are, um, you know, aren't able to, um, well, you know, they have uh, health issues and we want to make sure that they're safe. Um, sure, sure. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it's still good to, to see that that stuff is, is getting going and, and uh, you know, things are, um, are, are working and art is being created. You know, um, do you find right now too, that, um, you know, kind of the social distancing and everything that you're able to work more on your own personal stuff? Me? Or oh, both of you. Well, um, during my eight weeks of, of uh, being locked down, not being able to tattoo, mm -hmm. um, I did nothing. I got to be honest. I did nothing. I, I, did two, <laughs> I did two paintings, and then I just stopped doing anything. I just, okay. I just hung out and bothered my wife. That's <laughs> all I did. Yeah, almost lost her, you know, bothered her, bother, I bothered her a lot. You know? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's an introvert. She needs time alone to recharge, you know. I'm an extrovert. I need interaction to recharge. And so there I am in her face all day. Hi, honey, what's going on? Let's talk. Hey, what are you doing, you know? And <laughs> she was really rethinking our arrangement, you know. <laughs> Oh, I, I can I can understand. <laughs> oh, Enigma, how about you? Shop, you know, that was a lot, um, and uh, just you know, getting a portfolio together, and uh, also um, I, moving. I moved from Peoria, Illinois, to, to to out here to make a number of trips. But uh, gas prices were rock bottom, so that helped a lot. Nice. And uh, um, then, yeah, I'm I'm doing art all the time uh, because you know customers are coming in all the time because it's just, it's just this uh, it's the only shop in town and and uh, you know they, sometimes they just can't get away three hours to drive down to Denver and then you know three hours back and then right. you know they have kids and this and that and so. You know, they've just an hour or two to get uh, some tattoo or something. So this is a good opportunity for them. Uh, I'm not stepping on anybody's toes. It's good. Uh, I got new props, you know. Uh, I got a yeah. whip in the mail. I got uh, uh, some uh, – I got a wheelchair. Anyway, um, I, <laughs> I, uh, some things, I ordered, some things I ordered didn't I, – I, I ordered a tricycle, and it didn't come in the mail, and I didn't know how to – figure out how to 
because it says, you know, oh, COVID-19, you know, uh, wait for your shipment. It might be late and blah, blah. So you wait an extra day or an extra week or extra whatever. And, and then you're like, see, your are just kind of disappear off the map on the tracking. And by the, you know, by the time you're like, well, I'll give it an extra this or that, you get back to them and they're like, oh, sorry, it's too late money back on your package it's like well you asked me to wait for COVID-19 what do you do <laughs> anyway but that's just all the politics of you know only having like Walmart Target and uh, Amazon to get stuff because right. all the small stores have to close down because of COVID anyway no I'm not a political rant shoot um <laughs> so, yeah but yeah some, some things came in the mail really late you know sorry some things in mail came really late and and uh I finally just got some things that I want to use in the show but now it's you know to figure out how to put them in there and, this and that so but there's, there's a lot of things going on it's it's yeah <laughs> i want to know more about the wheelchair the name yeah of so did i i was hoping to you know it's like where where, where did the wheelchair uh, manifest <laughs> is that a well, spoiler the wheelchair is you can't funny. Tell? <laughs> Uh, no, I, I just, I don't know whether to put the cones on the floor or on top of this person's head that's in the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, there's some you can't say now, you know, because I'm old. So, you know, some things you can't say and some things you can say. And I'm usually the guy that always says the wrong thing. So, you know, I got to be kind of, <laughs> I mean, shoot, man, I, I'm just, a, you know, you know, I'm, I don't know this whole new world with all what it wants you to do and what you know they didn't have that back in the day they you know you you kept your mouth shut most of the time and uh you know and and you know how do you fight against how do you how do you rebel against society when society is is everybody's finding out everything about each other and all of a sudden realizing that everybody actually is weird when they when before they didn't know they didn't have phones Right. I we know where you're going. Everybody's actually listen. They're not all the same anymore. There is no moral majority anymore because everybody's finding out everybody's a weirdo. So then all of a sudden, being a weirdo doesn't mean nothing because <laughs> everybody is. <laughs> it's no longer unique. But but trust me, Enigma, you still are. <laughs> not not so many people can, can act I'll try can convey get themselves <laughs> as you do, especially. As uh, as illustrated as you are. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, my job is to sell the strange, the bizarre, and the unusual. And, and we we buy into it. So then, what about I got to sell something else? <laughs> what? Uh, and we you know buy I mean? into it. Yeah, we do. Well, you know yeah. what I mean, because <laughs> it's cool. But uh, but yeah, just. Just give me a heads up when you start selling, uh, you know, uh, ice to Eskimos, okay? Because then, you know, that's probably when I'm done. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, it's possible. I mean, anything's possible in this. True. Oh, man, you keep breaking you know, up. So I mean, these, maybe these fragmented <laughs> sentences are just. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. We know where you're going, though. So, so keep yeah. throwing them at us. <laughs> so, uh, Sorry. Yeah, you know, uh, Bobby, you're, you know, you, you know, after you know, reading through your your uh, your bio and uh, you know, learning you know, your your many lives that you've also lived, uh, you know, not unlike Enigma, um, you know, being a wrestler, I've got to ask, what is that like? I mean, I I grew it's up. A on, yeah, I was I, just running around the country and horse playing with my stupid friends for a living it was ridiculous i couldn't <laughs> believe that i was being paid to do it oh my god i yeah. mean, that that's got to be just wild i mean cuz it, it was it was surreal yeah it was absolutely surreal what, what, and what what kind of wrestling did you do like was it like more of the like what you see as the wwe or Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was jumping off. I was jumping off of stuff and yelling at people and hitting people with chairs and all that stuff, you know. And I did that for three years. I was back then. I was almost three hundred pounds. I was really big. Oh. I've lost a lot of that since, you know. I'm like two sixty now, but 
I was a behemoth back in those days, and I had a lot of fun. I mean, I got hurt a lot. I broke a lot of bones. I got a lot of dislocations, but oh, none of that was intentional. It was just gravity doing what gravity does, you know. And then, and then you you were able to transition into like TV commercials and television and, and film. Right. Again, to totally by accident. Somebody just told me about a commercial that they wanted a, a wrestler for. It just so happened that it was a national commercial for an unknown show at that time called Trading Spaces okay. that, did, that did really well. Yeah. And, uh, and so I did a couple more commercials. I did a couple short films and I did a couple of indies. And before you know it, um, there was uh, an opportunity to be on the big screen and, uh, and be in a big movie. And there I was. That, that's cool. And yeah, a lot of your <laughs> performances were, were a lot of uh, stunt work, correct? I've done a lot of stunt work because of my wrestling background. Right. Um, I've also been stunt choreographer on some projects. Um, wow. And and yeah, I've, I've got a lot of a lot of my wrestling background. I also trained with uh, a guy named Kim Kahana that uh, is very groovy. Uh, do, do you remember the banana splits? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember da Do you remember Danger Island on the banana splits? Yes. Do you? Okay. <laughs> This, that guy's name, this, this guy's name was Chongo on the Danger Island. He was the one that just did a bunch of flips and, <laughs> and yelled and did bird balls and stuff. Yeah. 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 That was my, oh my guy. Gosh, I love that. Every now and yeah. then when I'm talking to people, I go, uh oh, Tongo. And they're, they're yeah. like, ah. <laughs> just laughing. Nobody knows. Yeah. That was my guy. You know what's funny about him is the reason that he did all those crazy bird calls and stuff. He when he came in to uh, to um, audition, he uh, was handed a script and he's illiterate. He couldn't read any. He couldn't read a word. <laughs> wow. And so he just started yeah. doing all these flips and all these bird calls and all this weird language that he made up and they said oh yeah great and he was on set for quite a little while before they realized that he couldn't they read oh my <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's hilarious oh man <laughs> uh you know bobby uh you, you you said later on he started transitioning into uh writing and then producing um mm -hmm. You know, which do you prefer? Do you prefer the, the producing hat or the, the writing? I never, I hope I never have the misfortune of producing another movie. <laughs> it's, I, I don't mind being the lion producer, the guy that gets all the talent together. I totally enjoyed that. But right. chasing, the, chasing the money is, is uh, it's, it's grueling. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally uh, can understand. So, so do you prefer then the writing aspect? I prefer to act. Okay. I prefer to act. I prefer to just be in front of the camera, let all, let all the other people do the work. I just want to just act. Nice. Nice. I'm but inherently lazy. You know, I mean, I mean, really, really. Um, I drag myself in to do things all the time because I just, I would just as soon, well, I told you what I did during COVID, man. I sat right. and I watched TV. <laughs> that, yeah, you know. <laughs> so given, given the op, given the opportunity, I'll watch everything on Netflix. <laughs> I mean, I'm just that guy, you know, so. <laughs> Nice. So then what, what compels you to, to make your own film? Is it just a, a story that I'm you in love you? with? The, I'm in love with the project and my business partner can't negotiate. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. it, it, there's, there's two of us, man, you know, that we wear all the hats, you know, yeah. and so, and this was one that he just couldn't wear. Okay. You know, but he wrote us an amazing script and he's a wonderful director and a very talented DP. Cool. Um, but, uh, but yeah, negotiation is just not a strong suit. Yeah. So, so that's an area that, yeah, that you were able to, to fill and come in and save the day. So nice. far, so far. Nice. Well, it seems like you're making a, an amazing go of it. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, Enigma, I mean, you've got a, a film background. You were in X-Files. Um, yes. Yeah. And that's, that's still one of my favorite episodes, you know, for X-Files. <laughs> 
Uh, it's something yeah. that Elise and I have watched together quite a few times now. <laughs> I was so young. I don't know. I mean, I was 95 and um, it, it, was, uh, it, it was interesting because to see a high-end production, you know, but fast-paced because it's television uh, mm -hmm. and then go to like doing an independent film that's you know a small right. budget and it, it's really interesting and and uh it makes you appreciate all of it you know um you, you just it's just great to be swept up in the moment of of making film it, it just it's just a magic there that you know you you end up with people that you would never normally meet and uh and they're all just amazingly uh positive and uh and and just just talented you know and you, you know you don't see a lot a lot of specialty specialty acts out there you know you you go to the store or you got it that works here or works there we're just doing film people or entrepreneurs that are just pushing their own product which is themselves and and as far as they can and people that are doing the same kind of thing like that that i am it, it's really a magical, cool, special thing. It, do you find there's a lot of difference between, you know, your performance getting up on, on stage and then going and performing in a film? Yeah, that's, it's a totally different, well, I don't know. There's, it's, it's definitely, um, you have to get your adrenaline right at your fingertips uh, to do any of this stuff. Um, but in film, you also have to have at your fingertips um, ability to to look like you're crying or uh, a, a mere a, a huge range of emotion and uh, and and on theater it's mostly just get up and shake it you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> so. but oh she's she keeps trying to uh, okay. <laughs> she, she's, uh, she she's trying to, to call me through uh yeah you know, uh facebook uh you know video messenger and because of that i can't access my phone to text her <laughs> like hey honey yeah. <laughs> we're in the middle of an interview so she'll get the gist when she sees this posted yeah anyway <laughs> but uh you know uh enigma uh yeah you know, to that end too uh, much like uh, Bobby here, you know, doing the wrestling thing, hey, you're doing this, the sideshow stuff. I mean, that's, that's just as dangerous too. You both are doing these death-defying feats on stage before an audience. I mean, that's, that's incredibly <laughs> captivating. I, yeah, I think it's kind of like finding your place. Um, for me, it's, you know, with a blindfold on and a chainsaw coming at me, uh, that's just where I feel comfortable um you know whereas behind a desk uh you know writing numbers down i, I can't just not it it just it breaks my brain you know yeah. so i'd rather just be doing something that i'm comfortable with there is same with everybody some people would be very uncomfortable you know putting a blindfold on car with a chainsaw with a chainsaw cutting an apple up in your mouth but but it's for me that's just uh it's just fun and and i know what i can do you know um i, I think that's the a lot of it like if you it's comfortable you know yeah. comfort so yeah dangerous well for you but <laughs> for me it's like fun and games <laughs> do you find you say it's comfortable do you find that it's kind of like your zen place then almost meditative it's like uh yeah the stage is like walking across my living room floor you know Mm. it's it's just like i know this i know the stage i know where i'm at i know what i'm doing i everything is in place and and you play what you know and and maybe even get an extra jib or jab there you know but um you know like school was just a captive audience i didn't go there to do homework i i went there because i could entertain kids <laughs> yeah i loved school for that <laughs> and it, it seems to me that um that you know, like contemporary tattooing, wrestling, and and sideshow have very um, have uh, have these intersections, uh, you know, that, that date back to the, the turn of the twentieth century, if not a little. We're all carnies. Yeah, yeah. 
All yeah. of us. A lot of us. We're all current. Because you correct me if I'm wrong, because wasn't there, you know, sometimes a um, a wrestling ring at some of those events too? Even wrestling back came, then. Wrestling came out of the carnivals. Tattooing came out of the carnivals. Uh, the freak shows came out of the carnivals. All of it came out of the carnivals. Man, we're all a bunch of carnies. Yeah, I love it. It's 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 such an interesting intersection. Yeah, incidentally too. Yeah, I'm I'm a comic book person. Yeah, the uh, the whole um, notion of the visual design of the superhero came from the strongman, you know, the tights. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know that's yeah that's always why you know why superheroes are referred to as like wearing their costume, wearing their tights or their spandex, uh, because it was it was coined there as opposed yeah. to wearing your uniform and. You know, having more of this militaristic aspect, I suppose. Um, so it, it, it's interesting to see, you know, how like um, I guess it'd be appropriate to say like an American pastime, like going to the circus and, and seeing all those events, have really informed American culture still to this day, whether we you know acknowledge it or not. True, and the advertising is the same. Yeah. Really? You go on the phone <laughs> sites too? Yeah. The advertising is all the same. You know, yeah. the three primary colors, blue, red, and yellow. Right. And then, uh, right. you know, that's, that's, what, that's what sticks out. And so that's why, you know, Walmart has blue and yellow, you know, the big smiley face, blue and yellow. And then Target has the red and white, you know. It's, it's, yeah. all the, it's all using the same psychology that they did for advertising back in the day. It's, yeah. you know, the big banners and things, you know. Yeah, that they figured out back then. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that, that's wonderful. That's that's a pretty exciting history. I mean, we talked a little bit about how tattooing goes back thousands of years. I wonder how 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 much further back, uh, like, yeah. Well, obviously, you know, like traditional, you know, Greek, uh, like Greek wrestling, uh, you know, goes back to to ancient Greece. And you know, informed you know what we a little bit of what we do today um, that American culture knows as as wrestling, but uh, yeah, yeah, Enigma, do you have any inclination as to um, or any idea as to how far back um, <laughs> you know sideshow you know? Goes yeah, well, sideshow uh, goes way back, um, and in fact, uh, in Japan uh, there was an emperor that. Uh, really liked Sideshow and put it in, in theaters, and that eventually evolved into uh, Kabuki. No kidding. Um, yeah, it's a long, long time, like ancient history, but, um, but yeah, uh, so Japan is a lot of history of it. Um, of course, you know, ancient Egypt and stuff, um, you know, in the ancient hieroglyphics, you'd see, you know, people going down the river to swallow reeds, you know, and mm -hmm. it's just like uh, all, all these different cult cultures had bits and pieces of it and and that's the, the cool thing is that america being the big melting pot yeah. um all those cultures came here and and we exploited the hell out of it as we do right <laughs> and uh made money off it so you know it, people with uh big you know rings in their lips or or you know a sword swallowing which you know came, came from a number of different places but you know bed and nails all that stuff it's it's all just you know the hindu fakirs anything that was mystery you know anything that that people didn't know anything about. Photography was used as, as a big thing in, in sideshow. Oh, get your photo taken or, or an, an elephant, an, one elephant you could take around. Nobody had seen an elephant in their life. And so they'd go out and see an elephant. So it, it, the thing about all these phones and internet is once again, you know, just like television kind of put a big, you know, oh, you don't have to go to the circus now because that was, even though that was the CNN, the MTV of the day, it was like Facebook and Twitter all rolled up into one. But, you know, now they just turn on a TV set and see it. And so yeah. it's just less, you know. And then now with internet, you know, you could do something crazy like swallowing a sword. But then uh, they look up and there's like, you know, 15 people they could see do that, you know. So it, it's just kind of like, once again, trying to sell the strange, the bizarre, and the unusual. You know, it's a bit of a challenge these days. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. 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 Now. Yeah. Like you said, everything's uh, very accessible at the, the touch of uh, <laughs> touch of a screen. It's good and it's bad, yeah. you know. Good. Now you don't need a manager to do your art, but at the same time, uh, you know, there's some, there's 15 other people doing the same thing, you know. So, 
um, it's just trying to st stay unique and uh, and interesting in a market that's overloaded with you know strange and interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, but it, it still seems as though uh, you guys you know re yeah, remain uh, yeah very unique and interesting yourselves. Uh, yeah, original archetypes unto yourselves. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> uh oh, Enigma, did we lose you? There oh, is. Uh, no. Nope. There you oh, sorry. Are. <laughs> A little battery signal. Stop. Oh, okay. Did you plug it in? Uh, no, I guess I should. I have to come over here. Uh, hold okay. on. Let's well, see here. And then with that, too, uh, we're just about ready to start, you know, wrapping up. Um, you know, with uh, you know, Bobby with the film, where can people uh, go to, to follow you and your, your progress and, and uh, you know? Uh, well, really, I mean, the shopfilm.com oh, has got everything there. If people are interested in taking a look at the original clip or taking a look at who the, the, the cast members are, or if they're interested in coming on board as a producer, all of the perks and, and, and things are there. Um, everything that I know about the movie pretty much is there with the exception of the marketing research. Cool. Um, and then, you know, also Bobby, uh, you know, if you want to go ahead and plug your, your shop and where uh, people can find you so that they can book your talent. Well, you can sometimes find me at Freakies and Thornton. But um, I'm out and about doing a lot of stuff. I'm, I, uh, I just shot two movies this last month wow. and, a, and a commercial and still managed to try to continue to produce my movie. So I'm pretty busy. I'm not in the shop a whole lot, but when I am, this is where I am. Cool. Uh, so, so great. Just go to the Freaky's website. Yeah, just go to Freaky Thornton. Just Google up Freaky Thornton, man. You can find me. Nice, nice. But more importantly, jump on that theshopfilm.com. Really, really. Right. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, go out, support uh, you know film and art being created, especially uh, during such uh, yeah tough circumstances. Uh, you know, visit uh, you know the shop website, uh, theshopmovie.com. Is that correct? Theshopfilm.com. Theshopfilm.com. Uh, and then Enigma, you've got yeah. Tattoo EG, the uh, the, uh, the tattoo shop in in Sydney, Australia, Nebraska. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, where where can people uh, find you on online for for that, and then uh, for your performances? Well, the Enigma Live is um, the staple, uh, and then uh, that's dot com, and then tattooeg.com is also a spot. Mm -hmm. Um, and also Instagram, uh, Tattoo EG and The Enigma Live are there. Um, and I think there's a, a Facebook for Tattoo EG as well. Nice. Um, I don't know. I need to put all those links up on my <laughs> site. I just haven't gotten around to it. But, um, but yeah, uh, um, you know, everything's right there. It should be TheEnigmaLive.com. So. Oh, fantastic. Well, guys, it's, it's been uh, great having you on here um hopefully you know all three of us can can meet in the physical at some point soon um <laughs> you know uh, definitely the two of you uh will be working together next month in august it's already july jesus yeah. Yeah. this this year is uh basically uh gone by even if all you've been doing is watching tv <laughs> 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 oh but uh but yeah, it, it's been great uh, having you guys. Thank you so much for, for coming on to the show and uh, you you know, putting up with the likes of me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure. Thanks. Uh, this has been uh, Talking Palettes. Uh, your host, Daniel Crozier, signing off with my guest, Bobby Lee Black and the Enigma. Uh, thanks again, guys. And uh, everybody watching this, have a beautiful day and be kind to everybody. <laughs>